What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How are we doing today? Uh, today's going to be another in our videos here. Hopefully, I sound a lot better. I just recently received my my new microphone that I've been waiting for forever. So hopefully, I sound a lot better today. <clears throat> today, I'm going to show you guys some kind of really cool stuff. My my kids are bouncing off the wall, so I apologize if if we're picking them up. <laughs> anyway, um, what we're going to show you guys today is we're going to show you how to yes overclock the raspberry pi because there is actually a way to do it if you've downloaded um if you've been following the series and you've downloaded the raspbian uh wheezy version of the of the linux uh that goes on these things if you downloaded that version then it will come with an overclocker in it and as i've read um it states that it actually is um a safe overclocking which means it won't void your warranty if you overclock it uh, and stuff like that so um, that one seems to be the one that I'm using right now it seems to be pretty good actually you get um, you get a lot a little bit faster I think I'm gonna play with some other other things to see if I can't maybe get it faster and then I'll post when I get it faster but um, right now I'm just gonna show you how to do it um, I'm probably gonna I may post um, some pictures uh, maybe over here in this area or so here in a minute Um, about uh, uh, showing you, I took, I went ahead and made a uh, kind of like a heat sink, essentially that goes on it. And um, oh, hey, my server unexpectedly closed the network connection. How fun is that? So anyway, um, let's pop that back up. So what we're gonna do? Let's see if we can't. Uh, Thirty. Let's see if we can't log back in here. Okay, but anyway, I had made a. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say log in. Just so that we can get in here. Okay, that way I didn't do that again. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're gonna go ahead, and, or I, uh, I made a heat sink for it. I just took an old heat sink material I had around here, which was it was off of a TO220 uh, case. It was a it was a heat sink for like a I don't know for like a transistor or something. And I just kind of cut it down to size. Took a little bit of thermal grease that I had laying around and stuck it to the to the top of the little processor that's on this board. And uh, seems to be working pretty good, but I'm going to show you guys kind of the whole process of how to uh, how to overclock as well as uh, monitor uh, your temperature and make sure because there actually is some pretty cool temperature monitoring widgets that are out there for the uh, X session, basically you know Windows session of the of the Linux Debian. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to type in sudo raspi hyphen config so raspi hyphen config hit enter it's going to take you into that configuration screen that uh can i make this well, well maybe not okay well looks like uh, hopefully hopefully this is big enough for you guys hopefully you can see it anyway um it's going to take you into that same configuration screen that you had when you first started and so what you're going to do is there should be a spot that says overclock it says configure overclocking so you hit enter and of course, it tells you be aware, you know, that the overclocking can reduce the lifetime of your Raspberry Pi. So, the, what what the deal is with any time you overclock, which um, I've overclocked tons of PCs and stuff. Anytime you overclock anything, obviously you're going to generate more heat. You're pushing it faster. You're making the processor faster. And in order to get the processor faster, you're going to raise the voltage to it. Which that's what's kind of nice about this little built-in overclocking that's built into the Wheezy. Um, image is that it will do all of the uh, necessary voltage adjustments and whatnot for the processor to gain you that extra speed however usually obviously it creates more heat because there's more resistance so um, or not more resistance but it's just you know I squared R losses basically so you're gonna get more heat out of the processor well if you let that heat stay in the processor yes it can degrade the the processor and hurt and hurt it after a while, if not damage it immediately. Um, so what you want to do is you need to get the heat out of it. Hence why I went ahead and I built kind of like a little heat sink just to make sure. Um, you don't want to run your processor up around uh, 60, 70 degrees. You know uh, that's that's getting a little too hot. You know if you're anywhere from 40 to 50, you're probably okay. 50 is kind of pushing it maybe, but as long as you can stay within the 40s and the low 50s, you're probably going to be all right. 
so far as life of your of your chip and and damaging anything. So we're gonna hit OK. We got some we got some stuff to look for. If you can see, it tells you that it shows you that the first two, the of course normally it's none. It's at 700 megahertz is is the fast as uh, the ARM will run, and it's 250 megahertz core, 400 megahertz SD RAM, you know all that stuff. So it just overclocks the RAM. It does everything with the RAM. It's kind of like increasing the front side bus uh, on an Intel Pentium based uh, motherboard. It just it basically they overclock, or they'll push everything kind of up a ways. Well, anyway, um, as you can see, see they can do they'll do two volts. They'll over voltage it because obviously if you want speeds like I said faster and faster and faster you have to pump more voltage into the system well that's where you start gaining the heat so basically these first two you're probably not going to see a real big temperature problem uh, pumping it up to 800 megahertz so you could probably just leave it at 800 megahertz and be fine but once you start increasing the voltage um, and that's when you're going to start seeing heat develop across it so that's when you're going to want to build a, a heat sink well I went ahead and since I have a heat sink on mine and I use thermal grease and everything else to get it on there I went ahead and just went to a thousand megahertz we're just going to run it at a gig on the ARM core 500 megahertz on the, yeah, the core processor and then 600 megahertz on the SD RAM so that way we'll give the memory a little bit of a boost so you hit enter it says warning people have reported SD card corruption with this level of overclocking Okay, you know, um, I haven't seen any as of yet. I haven't had problems. Um, it might depend on what kind of SD card that you're using. Um, some, yeah, some of them may have problems. Some of them may not. I don't know. The one that I have um, isn't really a problem, so I don't think I had any, any issue with it. Once you're done, you're going to tab over to finish. Hit enter. Of course, it asks you if you want to reboot. We're going to say yes. Of course, that's going to kill my... Uh, putty session here so I'll have to I'll have to restart which is no big deal I'll just pop up putty uh, 2.168.1.30 okay so what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna give it a second because obviously it won't connect until it's uh, fully booted and a good way of judging whether your your Raspberry Pi is fully booted or not is if you look at the uh, you look at the LEDs on it they'll go away and they'll basically come back you know when they when when it's more or less fully booted you know I usually wait till all the LEDs light up and then wait a few seconds and then try it so we're gonna give it a shot now yep looks like it's booted so Pi Raspberry okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a VNC session uh, let's see server zero uh, geometry uh, 1680 by 1050 that's what my screen resolution is do a 24 depth alrighty so now we're gonna bust out some VNC action here and we're gonna go oh whoops Raz bear. there we go alright so now I'm gonna do the full screen trick here alright so here's our Raspberry Pi now for us to be able to monitor our uh, stuff we're going to uh, monitor the temperature and whatnot. We're going to have to add some widgets. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here over here on your system tray. Now, I already have these installed uh, just because, you know, I want to play with them and whatnot. But I'll show you how to install them. But see, you see this little 39 that's over here? I don't know if you guys can, can see that. I don't know if I can get a, I don't think I can get a magnifier thing. Um, let me see if, see if I can do something with this. Yeah. Nope. I just got full screen. Okay, well anyway. Alright. Down here on the tray there's a little 39 that's down here. You may have to crank the resolution up on this video, you know, maybe to be able to see it, because it might come out a little blurry since it defaults to uh, 480p. You may have to crank it up to 720 to be able to see this. But there's a little 39 over here. That's the actual temperature. That's the temperature of the core. So it's gonna tell you how hot it's getting. Right now it's 39, not a big deal. And then over here there's this little square and if you hover over it it'll tell you the frequency it tells you where where you're at and right now I'm at 700 megahertz because I'm not demanding uh, anything out of it um, if I open let's say the what is this Midori if I open the Midori or whatever isn't that isn't that a liquor oh anyway <laughs> uh, we're gonna open this up the minute I do that if I thumb over it well it helps if I double click on it once the processor gets going, now I'm at a thousand megahertz because it's loading it, and then of course, obviously, we see the process, you know, viewer it spikes off the chart because it's got to load it, and voila! Now we now we've done something. Let's click on YouTube. 
click on YouTube and we are at what are we at we're at a thousand megahertz so it, it loads fairly decently I mean it's not incredibly fast but I mean it it's fairly decent and and I may have to play with uh, I did not put any type of a cooler on the wow that guy's got really crazy hair Wow anyway um I didn't put any coolers on the uh, whatever it is on the the memory on the memory so I may have to put a little chunk of heat sink on the memory as well just to make sure that uh, it's staying cool I'm touching it with my finger right now it, yeah it seems fairly hot uh, one, one, one thing that I've noticed uh, over the years of, of messing with heat and, and temperature settings and stuff like that is that with your good calibrated finger <laughs> If you can keep your finger on it, it's probably uh, less than 50 degrees. If you uh, if it gets to where it's it's not like burning your finger, but yet it's getting to where you know it, it gets kind of ouchy after a while, then you're probably around 50, 55 degrees. So just kind of a quick, cool little rule of thumb. Okay. Anyway. Oh, hello. I switched desktops. Okay. Um. Let's get rid of this. Go away. Okay. Now, um, how to add widgets? Just right click. On your taskbar, you're going to go to Add Remove Panel Items. Uh, when you get that, you get a little screen like this. And what you're going to do is, good grief, is they, they make everything so small. Can I make this bigger? Yeah, I can make it a little bigger. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to click on the Add uh, button. And within here, you're going to add a couple things to get the, the that temperature and CPU monitor. Now, since I've already added them, they're not in here. So I, I'm going to show you what they're called. There's a uh, one that's called CPU Freak front end, F R E Q front end, and that's going to be the one that uh, shows you your frequency. That's that one that's down here that I'll show you. It's like a little square. So you're gonna look for that CPU R uh, F R E Q uh, front end. You're gonna look for that, and you're also gonna look for temperature monitor. So those are the two. I'll probably put put those in the comments below. Uh, which what the two. Uh, what the two uh, applets are, the, the little widgets that you need. But remember, but they're actually they start. If you haven't ever put them in, they're in the add menu. You add it, you pick uh, temperature monitor and CPU uh, FREQ uh, front end, and add those. Hit close, and then what you can also do. I, I should have. Hold on, I'll show you this too. There's these there's these buttons that say up and down. What that is is you can actually change the position of this stuff. Like, oh, for example, let me find the CPU freak front end. Okay, if I hit down, it's going to move it to the right. I don't know if you saw that down here, but down over here, it moved it to the to the right. And then if I if I move it up, if you notice, it moved it moved back to the left. And so that's how you can change the position of your stuff is with those up and down cursors. So okay, well this video's kind of taken gone on for quite a while now. So um, I think I'll probably leave off here we're gonna be having some other cool stuff coming out I think we're gonna uh, attempt to do an LCD screen uh, here in a little bit you know like my my normal LCD screen movies that I've done uh, with just one of those uh, Hitachi HD 44 or whatever it is protocols that uh, runs on just a standard you know like 16 by 2 um, LCD screen dot matrix uh, LCD screen we'll probably be doing stuff like that um, we'll try interfacing with that I also found I'm still working on it but if you guys want to research it maybe post some comments let me know what you guys are thinking there's a, a um, there's like a, a VB6 editor type deal like a visual basic editor that's called uh, uh, Gasbian or Gasbian or Gasbin or something like that it's like GA S B A N Gasbin or something like that. I can't remember, but um, there's another thing that couples with it for the GPIO on these, and you can somehow you can basically build like Visual Basic programs, so you can actually have like you can have command buttons and like a, a an object oriented programming structure, but yet still be able to grasp the GPIO. Well, if I if I could get time to figure that one out, um, I'll definitely post on that because that looks pretty cool. Those of you that may have seen that already or know how to do it or know how to get that put together, to where basically you can create a button that you click the button and it'll flip a GPIO pin high and then you click another button and it flips it low post in the comments or, or post me a reply video or something because I kinda like to know how to do that so I'm gonna probably discover it on my own but uh, if, if you guys can help me expedite that process would be fantastic so anyway that's pretty much all I have for today I just want to show you guys how to overclock one of these guys and like I said I, I'm probably gonna try and see what it's gonna do if I take the uh, 
take the heat sink off of it and see what my temperatures will do. I'm just going to kind of play around with it, optimize it a little bit. But I think uh, you guys would be fine if you just if you did the same thing. Put a little piece of aluminum or something, get some thermal grease, stick it on there. And like I said, if you get some, you get like a, uh, a TO220 uh, heat sink. You can get those from, you know, those different links I have on my on my channel. You can get those from uh, anywhere that distri distributes parts. You know, SparkFind Electronics, everybody has them. So anyway, well, before I ramble too long, I know too late, uh, I think that's that's going to be just about it. That, that probably ought to do it. All right, thank you guys. Take care. Keep on programming. Keep on posting good stuff, comments, like, subscribe, share all these videos with, uh, with your friends and whoever else. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy doing these, and I'm going to try to produce as many as I possibly can. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you later.